and welcome to the official YouTube channel for CellSci, dedicated to research and development directed at improving the treatment of cancer, autoimmune, and infectious diseases. Joining us today to give us a more in-depth overview of the company's latest news is CEO Gert Kirsten. Gertz, the FDA's Oncologic Drugs Advisory Committee recently evaluated the use of checkpoint inhibitors in patients with low PD-L1 expression. Could you summarize their findings and explain how this decision impacts the current treatments landscape? So for cancer, the biggest drugs are K2 non diptivo basically the checkpoint class, right? Everybody created them and they thought uh, this was going to cure all the cancer patients and no more cancer research would be needed. And then we figured out that they will really only work in about 30% of people. Because what they do is, if a tumor wants to defend itself, one of the many defense mechanisms is it makes what's the PDL1 receptors on the outside. And what they do is they basically shut down the immune system in the area of the tumor. That's obviously not good. What these checkpoint inhibitors do is they inhibit the PDL1, meaning they are removing the break that the tumor puts on the immune system. That's why they're great. In fact, Keytruda sells about $30 billion a year, is approved for 40 indications. Fantastic. Except 70% of people approximately, we know definitely in head and neck cancer, but literature says 70% of cancer patients don't have much PDL1 or they have no PDL1. So if your drug is supposed to inhibit PDL1, but there's no PDL1, then how's it going to work? So by now, people have seen the clinical data. It doesn't work. It doesn't extend survival. So the question that FDA asked, and this is the first time, that's why it's so important. Is it worth giving this to certain types of cancer patients? Is the risk too great? And the advisory committee this was just they start with some cancers and then over time, it's like a trial balloon. It's it's like the government, White House puts out a trial balloon. How do people react? That's what this is like. And the oncologic advisors voted that the risk is too great. There's not enough benefit. Now, we've been talking to FDA about essentially focusing on the people who have low amounts of PDL1 where k and Optivo do not work. And so that is a whole new area for 70% of the patients. Wow, that's, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> uh, well, the press release suggests that ODAC's decision highlights a significant treatment gap for PD-L1 negative cancer patients. So how does Multikine aim to address the gap and what evidence supports how effective this can be in this particular patient population? Let me address the evidence question first, right? Because theories are wonderful, you need evidence. So we ran a massive, in fact, the largest clinical trial of all times in head and neck cancer, which is from under your nose down to your clavicle. Well, it's 900,000 people, horrible disease. They cut your tongue out, lose your teeth from the radiation. It's just a horrible, horrible disease. Um, and we haven't had much success. So what we found in that study is that the people who have low amounts of PDL one had the best survival and tumors disappeared in three weeks. Right? We can only treat for three weeks because we have first treatment before surgery, radiation, chemo, when your immune system is still healthy. That means you're not allowed to delay the surgery. In three weeks, tumors disappeared. Think about that one. Right? So imagine somewhere down the road in the future, maybe we can save tongues. Would be a very nice thing. But what that told us is it's something FDA adopters like Marcus. The market tells you, okay, you would respond well to our drug and me, I would not respond well. And that's important because we give a lot of drugs that to patients who don't really, where they don't work. So we add toxicity. So that's, so we are focusing from, from the data, we're focusing on the patients who don't have much or have no PDL one And the reason it works for our drug is, remember PDL one is a break on the immune system? Well, our drug amplifies the immune system. So a break works against us. If there's no break, no PDL1, it helps. It's good for our, our drug. So they block, inhibit basically. So they need a lot of PDL1. 
we want no PDL1 or very little because we don't like the break on the immune system. Now, checkpoint inhibitors like Keytruda, as you mentioned, and Updevo have been effective in patients with high PDL1 expression. How does Multikine differentiate itself in terms of mechanism and efficacy for patients with low or negative PDL1 expression? So they inhibit PDL1, and therefore, if there's no PDL1, there's nothing to inhibit. And we strengthen the immune system, and therefore, PDL1 should be avoided because PDL1 is a break on the immune system. It's, it fights back. So we obviously prefer situations where the tumor doesn't fight back in that way. So that's why we're basically, imagine a big room. They are on one side of the room. We are on the other side of the room. Mm -hmm. And maybe we'll find ways to combine them somewhere down the road. But right now, we each have our own corner. So given ODAC's recent findings, how does CellSci plan to engage with the FDA regarding multi-kinds approval process? Are there specific regulatory strategies beyond being considered to speed up its availability to patients? Yes. In fact, we had a very good meeting with the FDA just a few months ago. They like what we're doing. They said, we'd like to help you, but that's always the big but. You have to do a study, and that study is 212 patients. It focuses on the people who have a low amount of PDL1. And now comes the really good thing. We know that these people have a survival of 73% compared to 45% at five years. So you know it's really meaningful, right? In a disease where no one has improved survival in decades. And by the way, the drug is not toxic. That's really what it's boils down to, right? Yeah, yeah, sur for survival for sure. Add adding, I would say, any kind of, any years to someone's life is- uh, Yeah, we're adding almost four years of life, mm -hmm. which takes people over five years, which means in theory, five years is considered to be a cure. Yeah, yeah. But that only can happen if you activate the immune system before surgery, radiation, chemo, destroy it. That's the key. Now, the press release also mentions the potential of multi-kind as a combination therapy with current checkpoint inhibitors. Can you elaborate on that and how such combinations might work and the potential benefits for patients? Well, as I said, for right now, it's we're on opposite sides of the room. They work with a lot of PDL1, 30% of patients. We work in the area that is 70% of patients, which is obviously huge. And then, so I don't think right now you need to combine them with doctors want to do that. They can, they can do that. We don't have the funds. We are focused on bringing this drug to market for these PDL1 uh, low and negative patients because we have figured out where this drug works and it works really, really well. How does ODAC's decision influence cell size strategic priorities and research focus moving forward? Are there plans to explore multi-kinds uh, application in other cancer types or patient populations? Yes, those plans have always existed. So we came before the ODAC decision. You see, you get, it's like getting a patent. If you get a patent, you must be the first one to think of something. So we thought of this PDL one angle before the FDA uh, went to ODAC with it. So it's it just it's nice to see that the key people, FDA and the the oncology boards, think like we do. And we are literally, as far as we can tell today, the only ones looking at PDL1 lower, PDL1 negative patients who are not being helped by any of the existing medicines. Let's wrap this up with kind of a message to your stakeholders. In light of these developments, what message would you like to convey to cell size investors, partners, and the broader medical community regarding the future of multikine and its role in cancer treatment? We've been working on this for a long time and we've had our ups and downs, but we finally figured out exactly where this drug works. We are able to give huge survival benefit with no toxicities 
and a disease where literally no one has been able to improve overall survival in decades. Mm -hmm. So we have to do a small clinical trial. Yes, it's time, but then we can truly change the outcome for so many families and our shareholders will make money along the way, which is a side benefit. Then we probably need to turn over the company to a big pharma because the drug should be developed for breast cancer, melanoma, cervical cancer, bladder cancer. Why wouldn't you want to activate the immune system before surgery, radiation, chemo? Why wouldn't you want to address the PDL1 unserved population? And that's where it should go.